Today is Friday, October 9. My name is Pastor Anthony, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Today our text comes from Nehemiah 1. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Nehemiah 1, verses 8-10 through 10. These are the same verses from yesterday, you probably recognize them. But today I'd like to lift up a different thread. One that Pastor Michael touched on a few days ago, but that bears repeating. Nehemiah's prayer lives in the real world of God's kingdom. What do I mean by that? It can be really easy to take the things that we see as if they are the things that are. For example, we see governments in power in our country and across the border. We see the pandemic rearing up again around us. We see inequalities and hatred between people. We see our church building begin to open back up for in-person worship and live stream. But not all of these things are as they appear to be. In the eyes of Nehemiah's prayer, the eyes shaped by the kingdom of God, the world looks differently. Governments in power, whether the king of Persia or a modern-day prime minister or president, only hold that power insofar as God grants it to them for a time. But always the Lord is the true king, the true holder of power. It was not the power of the Babylonians that exiled Israel, nor the mercy of the Persians who allowed them back. I mean, it was them, but it was always the Lord their God working in the events of history and through the powers of this world to accomplish the things that he had decreed, as Nehemiah says. Evil and suffering, likewise, even this current pandemic, are not the way God created this world to be, and thus they are not fixed and immovable realities. Instead, evil and suffering are things that somehow, strangely, God can, and it sometimes does, and at other times does not, intervene in but are things that he can and does work through, and things that in the end he will expunge from his renewed creation, because evil and suffering have never been part of his intention for life. And that includes enmity and injustice between peoples. Racism has no place in the kingdom of God. As for Jesus' church, it's Jesus' church. As Pastor Michael reminded us yesterday, Jesus himself has become our temple, The place where we meet with God is in and through him. And he is the one that creates, builds, sustains, and preserves his church by his own goodwill and pleasure for the sake of his glory, even through a pandemic. And Jesus does not only dwell inside our church buildings. He is with us wherever we are, doing his work among his people. We are participants, and we have a place, and we are invited to put our own hands to the work of being this community of his church, but always with our eyes on Jesus, who reminds us that there is more at work, more going on, than just what we see and just what we ourselves are doing. There are lots of worrisome things afoot right now, and going back to church this coming Sunday is going to be strange. It won't be what we are used to. But through the lens of the real world, the world of the kingdom of God, we are reminded that Jesus is still on his throne, that God is still God, and that the Spirit is still at work. And that real world is our world, just seen differently through the eyes of faith, through the eyes of prayer. As you journey on, go with the blessing of God. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. 
may he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.